Good morning, everyone. My name is Jay Lee. I'm a senior physics major here at Temple University. And today, I would like to share with you my story and my perspective on one of the greatest challenges for the scientific community. I grew up in a small city in South Korea and lived there until six years ago when I became a high school dropout. At the time, I lost my motivation to continue my education because of the extremely competitive and stressful educational environment there. Imagine that a single exam, given at the end of your high school years, determine where you go to college. Your GPA doesn't matter, and extracurricular activity is non-existent. Some people do thrive in such an environment, but I found it to, uh, to be utterly suffocating, so that's why I quit. So after idling around for about six months, I thought I should do something with my life. So I decided to apply to a one-year exchange student program to come to the United States. So in the fall of 2007, I came to the state with a lot of great expectations and hopes. But unfortunately, soon after my arrival, I had some personal complications and couldn't go to school for another six months. During the one year that I couldn't go to school, I felt quite isolated from the rest of the world. In fact, I was lonely and I felt like a failure. And I was scared to death that I was going to stay that way for the rest of my life. So during this difficult time, I promised myself that given an opportunity, given a chance, that I would do everything I could to become somebody who would contribute to making the world a better place to be. And it is also during this uncertain time of my life that I fell in love with physics for its apparent certainty and for its universal indifference to my more private sufferings. So after those six months, I went to a high school in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and two years later, I came to Temple. And at Temple, I realized that that opportunity that I hoped for was right here. Temple had excellent research programs that enabled me to do research at the frontier of exciting fields like experimental condensed physics and computational physical chemistry. I met professors who were genuinely interested in teaching and mentoring their students. For, for example, Professor Dieter Forster would sit down with me several hours a week to talk about physics and other general things in life. Having fallen once in life, I constantly had to deal with this debilitating sense of inadequacy and insecurity. But given these opportunities, I felt morally obligated to do my best to fulfill that promise that I made to myself several years ago. So I stayed strong, and I worked hard. And luckily, things worked out for me. This May, I'll graduate, having finished my bachelor's degree in three years, and in the fall, I'll be going to Harvard for a PhD in physics. So what I want to remind you through my story is that what may seem ordinary, like Temple's research programs, or even a caring professor, can and do make real differences in students' lives. They inspire us to be curious and explore, and they propel us to strive to better ourselves in the face of life's adversities. And from my experience of once being a high school dropout to going to Harvard for a PhD in physics, I really came to believe in the mundane character of excellence in science. That is, what it takes to understand and excel in science are not some dangerous and useless concepts like innate talents, but more simply, the right combination of sufficient resources and individual hard work. The process of achieving excellence in science is gradual, it's incremental, it's indeed mundane, and there's nothing extraordinary about it. Given the right support, curiosity, and the individual's willingness to the necessary hard work, anyone, anyone can understand and enjoy science. So it is heartbreaking to see so many people losing their interest in science simply because from an early age they were told or made to think that they're just not smart enough, not talented enough to understand science. In fact, I was told by one of my middle school math teachers that I'm not good at math, so I should do something 
other than science. And look where I'm now. <laughs> Too many are deprived of one of the finest human experiences, exploring and understanding nature through science. So imagine the world where the majority of people approach science not with fear or sense of inadequacy, but with children's wonderment and curiosity. In such a world, not only the scientific community will benefit from its increased size and resources, but also the society at large will benefit from its better informed, more capable citizenry. So for this reason, I believe that the education of science itself is one of the most pressing problems for the scientific community to address. The education of science, based on the belief in the mundanity of excellence, that's the direction and that's the goal towards which I want to dedicate my life. And I hope that someday you'll join me in this wonderful endeavor. Thank you.